thank you very much for inviting me to speak to you today on healing and growth mechanisms in stem cell driven regeneration in deer antler. The team involved in this research is quite a large team involving myself, uh, Jin Dong, who is the PhD student who's come across from China and he's been with us for a year now. Uh, Trudy is a biochemist, Stephen's a chemist, and Changi is a very well known um, antler researcher in China. So our major objectives are first to maintain and build capability in red deer antler research within New Zealand. And as I've already described, this is a multi-centre project uh, involving a very broad range of skills. The second is to conduct a study of the immune response during antler healing. And this um, addresses some welfare issues around how an, an antler or a deer responds uh, once uh, open wound occurs after casting and potentially during velveting. The last three objectives relate to product development and that includes making new velvet products and defining new biomarkers for velvet. And they include determining the differences in proteins produced in antler, pedicle and equivalent facial cells. And I'll show you some pictures to explain that. And so investigate the role of one of those factors which we've already found, which is pleiotrophin and its receptors in antler and to develop new extracts enriched for pleiotrophin. I'm all sure you're all very, very well aware of uh, the antler growth cycle, but I've put this up just so that you can focus our research, the, the um, immune response or inflammatory response to stop infection is very focused around this stage here. So that after casting of the hard antler, seven days later we have a, a velvet antler stub that looks something like this, which is focused on the first seven days and our stem cell research is focused on commercial. If you look at um, this slide here in A, we have an uh, antler that's about one day after casting. And you can already see the growth of this round um, velvet antler that regrows the antler. But we've been actually looking in the centre region, and you can see here um, a growing antler after about one day. And in the middle here of that growing antler, we have a, what I would call a really busy sort of area of cells, and it's full of a whole lot of inflammatory cells. But the thing that we've been very interested in is, by about three days later, that same area, those inflammatory cells have disappeared. So the antler has the ability to not only grow really rapidly, but control in the um, inflammatory response really well. And um, this research has just started, and we're now drilling down a little bit deeper to see which inflammatory cells are present during that healing process. So the next part of the research is around stem cells. And you might say, well, why study stem cells? And what are stem cells anyhow in, in relation to an antler? So I'd explain it like this. Um, if you've got a body for a car, and normally that body for a car would be built for a specific vehicle, so it might become a Toyota. It can't become anything else. You made the body, you build a car around it, it's a Toyota. So a stem cell is a very special cell. It's got a very special body that can change. So instead of it becoming a Toyota, it might become a BMW or a Volvo, or if you're really lucky, it might become an Aston Martin. So you've got this really, really special cell, and antler is a really good example of this cell that can become multiple things. So an antler in the lab, we can harvest stem cells, and that we can make them cartilage, we can make them bone, we can make them fat, we can make them liver. Um, we think we can make them a neuron. Um, so and maybe a blood vessel. So they have this ability to become lots of different cells, and that's really valuable to modern medicine, because activating and controlling stem cells is, is the future of medicine, really. And you all know that, because um, you know about bone marrow transplants and treatment of leukemia. Um, we can get stem cells out of um, fat tissue. And the other day, we purified some um, stem cells from sheep and put them back into bone and made bone grow in a sheep. So these stem cells are a really valuable for, tool for the future, and we strongly believe that velvet um, forms a very important um, 
uh, niche in this space. It can provide information and also extracts that can control and regulate um, stem cells. So where do we get the stem cells from an antler? We can get them from a number of different places, but in our lab we've been collecting them from the antler tip, which is the most rich, enriched source. And when we grow them in culture in the laboratory, you can see the bit of tissue there, these cells all grow out from it, and they grow faster than any other cell we grow in our lab. And then we can do some pretty flash science with it. So this is some of Dong's work. Um, so when we run it out on, on uh, these proteins from these different tissues out on a gel, it looks a bit like, oh, I don't know, stars in the universe. And we can work out um, which ones are up there's more of and which proteins there's less of. So anywhere where it's red, we've got more protein, and where it's green, there's less protein. And each of these bars here is a protein. And we can compare that facial periosteum that we were peeling off, the facial bone covering, with the bone covering from antler as, appeared to the, as compared to the bone covering from periosteum. And in the case of periosteum, we've actually, um, from the pedicle, we've compared the pedicle at the top of the pedicle, which t gets activated with pedicle from the base, which is dormant for future years. And when you look at it in a very uh, crude sense, you can see the facial cells have very similar um, proteins. The pedicle ones, the two, the upper and the lower um, pedicle, we can't tell the difference between them, but the antler is quite distinct. And that's a very valuable tool moving forward as a researcher. And when we look at the sorts of proteins that are produced, we can actually put names to them, and you can see all these red proteins here are all things that are highly expressed in um, an antler. And you might go, oh, well, it's just a lot of science. Actually, this is the leading edge of how we can then make very specialised extracts that are enriched for these proteins, and we can also select out of these proteins biomarkers for velvet, and that's what we've been working on. So here's an example of an extract that makes blood vessels grow, as we're talking about. Um, Bain, uh, Catherine was talking about uh, making blood vessels grow to help with um, brain function. So in this diagram here, we have a distance here that the sort of blood vessels can grow. And in the red, we have some control conditions, and they don't grow that far. They grow out to a distance of our third marker. When we put a velvet at, uh, extract, a total velvet extract on, they grow out a wee bit further. And in the yellow here, when we put a very specific extract of velvet that we've made, using the information we've gained from other studies, we can make them grow even faster. So this is how we can use that information to develop new extracts of velvet. And then if you look at a biomarker, the one we've been particularly focused on in this project is pleiotrophin, and it came out of um, these um, studies identifying different proteins in velvet. And it's a, it's a lovely wee molecule, um, sort of thing that scientists get very excited about. Uh, and it has lots of receptors. Um, and one is called integrin, another is called ALK that we're looking at, and the other, which is very difficult to say because it's got lots of consonants, is RPTPZ. And it's a very exciting receptor, and I'll tell you why in a minute. But pleiotrophin has multiple functions, and this is one of the reasons we're, we're so interested in it. It is angiogenic, so it makes blood vessels grow. That's really important for healing. It's one of the primary things you need to happen if you want a wound to heal. It helps control inflammation, as we talked about before. That's really important. It controls differentiation. So it tells a cell, oh, you're to become bone. You're to become cartilage and that's really important in terms of healing as well. And it also controls stem cells. It keeps them in a niche and it tells them when to become something else. So this is a really good target molecule and um, we discovered it from some, array, um, some science we'd done a number of years ago. So is pleiotrophin even an antler? The answer is yes, um, in very high concentrations, more than we've seen in any other model. So down here in D, we've got a sort of control background level. And up here is an A is the, sort of the skin of the antler. The, 
and there's no pleiotropin, but when we come down to the stem cell layers, which is just under the skin, and into the cartilage commas, everything that's brown is the pleiotropin. So there's lots of it, and um, th that was really encouraging to be able to uh, see lots of it. And I wanted just to show you the um, R PTPZ protein. Um, we're really interested in this um, protein that pleiotropin binds to. It's like um, it's like the brakes in a car. So if you take the brakes off here uh, on a cell, the cell will go even faster. And so when this P RPTPZ protein is turned on, the cells have no brakes. They just grow and grow. And that's why antler can grow at two centimetres a day. It's got this RPTPZ, we think, that is allowing that to happen. So um, we're really interested in, in this molecule and what it means in terms of antler growth. So by way of conclusion, um, we found thus far that the immune response is tightly controlled in, during antler healing, that antler has a unique set of proteins and that we can use these proteins to make extracts and uh, for future development. That Therapies based on controlling stem cell hold exciting promise in medicine and that Velvet has a place to play in that, um, in that space. And that pleiotrophin is an important antler growth molecule and we are currently uh, in the process of making an extract of Velvet that is enriched for pleiotrophin and we don't think that's particularly difficult to do. So we're quite excited about that. Uh, thank you for your time. Before Dawn goes, does anybody have any questions for her? Yes, I can see one at the back and another at the front. So would it be possible to grow venison from those stem cells? Would it be possible to grow venison from those stem cells? <laughs> Other people are growing uh, venison from stem cells, um, but not, not uh, in our hands. <laughs> Um, those who claim that they can grow meat from stem cells can. It's not hard. It's hard to do it economically. You guys can do it much more cost-effectively and uh, eco-friendly on your farms. <laughs> yeah. And um, I can see one more near the front here. I've got the microphone. <laughs> Yes, um, so the, obviously as proteins go through the gut, they are degraded, and one of the reasons we're um, very interested in pleiotrophin is that it's very small and it is very stable, and that we can also um, model what happens when it goes through the gut by making smaller bits of that protein, the, the, the active parts. Yeah. We'll have one more question, then we'll move on. Graham? Okay, thank you. Um, for answer you having the mic. Uh, yeah, great, very interesting, very exciting, I think, uh, from a scientific point of view. But from a uh, commercial point of view, um, what are the, uh, you know, <clears throat> when you do identify and find a way to extract these particular proteins and these various uh, 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 material, what is the uh, consumer product that we can produce which uh, it would, make, would be exclusive and... Um, Give the velvet another use out in the uh, out in the marketplace. So we're looking really for other type of products that we can produce from these new, you know, these new findings. Thank you. So there's very good evidence that velvet can be used in products for um, blood vessel growth, and obviously the Regenerics are involved in the inception of that project as well. So we are very focused around projects, um, endpoints that look at wound healing, that look at bone growth, because um, that's the, the end point that these enhanced velvet extracts uh, will be most useful in, in my opinion. 
All right, thank you very much, Dawn, if you could show your appreciation.